Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I stand to uh, make a brief contribution, Mr. Speaker. But I want you to allow me a few seconds, Mr. Speaker, to, since this is the first sitting of, of the Parliament, I want to thank God for another year, 2024, Mr. Speaker. And I want to um, promise the people of the for North, Mr. Speaker, that I'll continue to do the best that I can to represent them in the Parliament. I support the borrowing of U.S. $2.343 million, Mr. Speaker, from the CDF for the implementation of the Community Tourism Program. Mr. Speaker, my brief contribution will, will simply ask the Parliament and, and the people of St. Lucia who are watching, Mr. Speaker, to, to think of where we want to be in three years' time. Where do we want to be in three years' time? Mr. Speaker, we came to the House today, the, the Member of Parliament for Castries East and the Minister for Finance presented three motions. One, US 15 million from the International Development Association for the OECS Skills and Innovation Project, which focus on upskilling for youth, Mr. Speaker. Then we had the $42 million tax administration and modernization project and learn administration services program. And this one, the $2.343 million, US million dollars for the community tourism program. Mr. Speaker, just imagine a place where within communities all around St. Lucia, we have our people, both young people and older people, creating experiences for, for visitors, not only visitors from out of St. Lucia, but local visitors to experience the gastronomy, meaning the, the, the things that we cook, the things that we eat, to experience the music, to experience our hospitality on display in a well-organized way. Just imagine, Mr. Speaker, the connection between increased skills within our communities which is what we spoke about earlier when we, when we spoke about the, the OECS Skills and Innovative Pro, Innovation Project. Just imagine a, a country where our young people are given skills, where they, they can use these skills to, to cause the people who visit our communities to benefit. Just imagine, Mr. Speaker, a, a country where in different parts of St. Lucia, you have the various specialties we, we saw in Denry, we, we, the CMOS experience and so on. Just imagine in three years' time, in four years' time, when all of these experiences will come to bear and more people all around St. Lucia benefiting from the, from the tourist dollar. And again, tourists meaning people who come from overseas, but people who are from Grozile, but who never went to Bellevue and they want to experience a nice solo or a nice court or a nice storytelling evening. All of these can be very, very important. Mr. Speaker, when you speak of community tourism, we cannot divorce, Mr. Speaker, the whole business of, of buildings and old buildings. In, in the city of Castries, for example, the city of Castries, Mr. Speaker, in, within the city of Castries, there are many buildings that can be rehabilitated. Some of them are ruins, but they have the potential for the development of experiences for individuals, whether they be visitors or even St. Lucians. And then you heard, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the, leader of the opposition talking about an 80-year-old building. Every time I hear the opposition speak about an, what they consider to be an old building, they're saying that we are using an old building and turning it in, returning a hospital to an old 80 year old building. Mr. Speaker, this is really shameful to hear them speak about this. And I, I just went quickly, Mr. Speaker, to, to, to look at within the context of tourism and rehabilitating buildings. I went quickly, Mr. Speaker, to look at the age of hospital buildings around the world. And Mr. Speaker, the oldest hospital building which is still in use in England, St. Bartholomew's, the oldest one, Mr. Speaker, is 900 years old. The oldest hospital in England, 900 years old, Mr. Speaker. You know, when you had a leader of the opposition, and again, instead of educating St. Lucians, instead of telling St. Lucians who believe them, 
that this is not the way to think. That because a building has been there for a very long time, it's of no use. It's, it's, you know, when people think like that, Mr. Speaker, they translate it subconsciously to the way they treat people, you know, Mr. Speaker. They will put elderly people on a side. Depuis bagay la gwen, il pa vre, il pa bon anko kwaze rekli. Il pa li vare. It's a very subconscious way of telling you how to treat things that have, people have worked on for years. And I want the opposition to listen to that. The oldest hospital which is still being used in England is 900 years old. In fact, it's more than 900 years old. It's about 902 years old. If you go to Brazil, Santa, Santa Catrina Hospital in Brazil was built in 1906. And it's still being used, Mr. Speaker. The oldest public hospital in Canada, where he comes from, he's a product of. The Kingston General Hospital, KGH, is the oldest public hospital in Canada. It was opened in 1835. We are speaking about community tourism, Mr. Speaker. I see you, you, you looked at me. We are speaking about the possibilities. Heritage tourism in the city of Castries. That's right, Mr. Speaker. And I have said to the doctors and the administration of the Millennium Heights Medical Complex and, and to the staff of the Ministry of Health, I have said to them that the Victoria Hospital site is a prime tourism site. And we have to turn it into a prime tourism, tourist attraction for locals. The young people, the young nurses, the young doctors and St. Lucians need to know the history of Victoria Hospital and Dr. Owen, the Owen King and, the, and so many, the matrons and so on, the, you know? La, Nurse Lambert and Nurse Alce and all of these people and so many others. These institutions are not just buildings, but the buildings, Mr. Speaker, the walls, the hallowed walls have history and stories. And for the leader of the opposition, every time like that, to just stand up and talk about old buildings. You talk about St. Jude, where Mother Oma and all of these people struggled, sisters of the sorrowful mother, struggled to ensure that we had a good community hospital at St. Jude. And every single time, the opposition just stands up, oh, vieil hospital, vieil bagay. And there are people jumping up in pumpers and everything. Believe in those kinds of things. This is, this is disrespectful, it's deliberate, and it goes to the heart of what the opposition represents, Mr. Speaker, and what they think about St. Lucians. When you diss St. Jude Hospital, and you talk about an old 80-year-old building, you are dissing all of those people who sacrifice. And 80 years old. And they, 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 they go even further to talk about the 80 year old program in health. So when you tie all of this in, Mr. Speaker, the opposition has no regard for solutions. And just one more, Mr. Speaker. He loves America. He's a product of Canada. The New York City Health and Hospitals, Bellevue, is, the, is one of the oldest hospitals in America. It was built in 1736. There's another one, the Charity Hospital in Louisiana. It was closed because of Hurricane Katrina, but it was built and it continued to function. It was built in 1736. Pennsylvania Hospital, 1751. And, and has he gone to visit the hallowed walls of all of these universities in England and these old universities in Oxford and Cambridge and, you know, and although it's recent, has he gone to St. Augustine and all those? They, they, they are a little younger, but still, we do not discard buildings because they are old. We say they are old. You understand? You go to the Mon, and maybe that's why, Mr. Speaker, over the years, 
Maybe that's why over the years we have such, a, such disdain for us, St. Lucians, yeah. what we have built. <laughs> so they mash up the prison, that I go, that's all, that's whatever. So Mr. Speaker, I, I speak about community tourism in that context. Because when you really think about it, you know, when you really think about it, community tourism is really about traditions and, and culture and, and food and gastronomy and, and, and discipline. And when the member for, for Chozel spoke about what he said, the, the member for Vivot Sao said and said about how we treat ourselves and our environment, when you really think about it, Community tourism is not just about the building and the sea and so on, you know. It's about our, we are reaching into our heritage. Yes, the manners, our St. Lucianness, greeting people nicely, not the violence and so on. So in a way, if we do it well and we bring back community and let's work on, on an experience, whether it's drumming or singing or, or taking people to, to the farms or whatever it is, how we take care of the rivers and so on, when you really think about it, community tourism really is about us, our solutionness that we can share with, as a, the brother for Kashmir South East said, we can share with ourselves in St. Lucia and we can share with others. And when we develop ourselves and we show what we truly are, we're not violent people. Something has caused a, a small group of us, of our people, to become violent and you know, we have to stamp it out. But that's not us. That's not, that is not, that's not us. That's not St. Lucian. That's not the St. Lucian-ness in us. So what community tourism does, or what it will do, what, what, so when you go to Place Kassav and when you go to Denry Fish Fry, the community itself will build an experience where you'll feel safe. It's not about making sure they have less police and them kind of thing. The moment you feel, well, in your community tourism is old and police we need to have, then we need to revisit how the community itself. So it's a community vibe. Yeah. So in Viewfort North, where we have CMOS, I know Miku North is doing the CMOS thing. It's a community thing. So they can tell the story. CMOS, yeah. We have no CMOS. We have no CMOS. <laughs> yes, um, the people of VF for North needs to know that I'm being challenged about us having a sea, it's a seafront. Yeah, we, we have endless sea, Savants Bay. Even where, even where the new hotel is being built, Canals. This is View Fort North. Yes. So. <laughs> Look, now I'm being accused of rejoining the maps. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, ça me dit assez. Ça fait community tourism, ça c'est nous, c'est cette liste. Ça nous voulait faire, c'est moutouer, j'en cette liste, cette liste. Ça, qui ça nous, qui valait nous ni? Valait nous, c'est pas valait, valait nous, c'est pas violence. Adam Moun a pon by violence ça pour pour bagay yo même c'est un bagay nous nous nou ni pour croiser nous ni pour tout bout parce que saint lucien nous pas moun violence nous c'est moun l'amour nous c'est moun qu'il tait nous c'est moun qui aime bagay qui bon comme ça community tourism ni pour mener ces bagay ça là aider nous mener sa vie pas pour gens l'autre pays seulement mais pour nous même et pour nous comprendre qu'on nous qui nous ni bagay qui valait qui ni valait à toutes ces communes-là. Babouno ni sali. Et j'ai à ces villes-là tout. J'ai à ces villes-là. Many countries in the world, Mr. Speaker. The city. The city is a place of culture and, and art. Castries city must become a place of art and culture. And people on a Sunday, on a Saturday, on a Wednesday evening need to want to leave Soufre or Viefor and say, well, you know, tonight there's a play at Walcott House in Castries. Let's go down for the vibe. Robert Lee has a, a poetry reading or, or, or there's a, 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 an art display. Let's go to Castries. And maybe on a Sunday there's a, a whole vibe in the boulevard. 
with craft and paintings and so the city itself, Mr. Speaker, has to become a center for 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 community tourism in a in a vibe. So that when the whole country is mobilized around ourselves, when people, as the member of the Castle South is said, when people come to our thing now, they, they're not just seeing the painting, because the painting by itself, the painting by itself without a story, we, we, without a vibe, without a, a context, it's just paint. But when you put context to paintings and poetry and art and, and food and so on, then you, you have an experience. And that's what the member for Castle South and, and the Prime Minister and the Cabinet is trying to do. So this thing about old buildings and old people and so on, anytime the opposition comes to that, we have to mash them up with ashes. Tomorrow is, is Ash Wednesday. Mash them up with that. Because they are trying to denigrate our ourselves our culture our the essence of solutions what we stand for so what what i can see mr speaker what i see happening what i see happening is i see a revival of not just things for tourists but a revival of us so that when we value us there is no need to even tell people to clean their communities because we're going to mobilize the country around, hey, this is important. How you throw in a refrigerator in the river when the river is connected to us? When long time ago, that's where our people took water from and cooked from. And when people understand these things, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, Mr. Speaker. It's going to be challenging because this is a process. It's going to be challenging. But if we start one or two places and the successes, we can multiply the successes and so on. So, Mr. Speaker, it, it will help to build, to build us and to build ourselves. I want to say to you also, Mr. Speaker, that I want to tie the community tourism activities to what the Prime Minister laid earlier in the House, the motion, and what the Minister for Education spoke to. So we are not only building skills for services like, like in restaurants and so on. These are very important. But when the young people get additional skills, just imagine, we have a place in Vieux for North called Vigie, tranquil, a lot of land, flat, nice, beautiful. You had a wind there in a different kind of way. I've told the people that's the best camping site, that's the best place for camping in St. Lucia. Just imagine if we turn that into a place where every year you have hundreds of people camping there with services and, and, and you have young people with skills with technology and we increase the bandwidth and so on and and people are, that's that's tourism people come into our communities to work not just to come up the cruise ship you know that's good but just imagine if we develop spaces in saint lucia where somebody decides you know what i come and spend a week in babuno or in bellevue or by the waterfall and we have all the facilities or you know and then i can do my work and I'm, I'm safe and everything. We can imagine the kind of exchange and so on. So reskilling and upskilling, all of these things tie into the community tourism. I love it, Mr. Speaker, because I know that my constituents will benefit in addition to the rest of the country. I've said before, our dream is to have a, a place of, of, it's already fresh and green and with our waterfalls is to have arts, cultural exchanges, an amphitheater at Piero. We've started our drum, the drumming festival. We want to continue with that. But with exchanges, just imagine you have this drumming festival and for a whole weekend, as the, the member for Castle South has said to me, and, and that is the vibe that he wants. A whole weekend, you have people from, from French Guyana, you have people from Guadeloupe, Guyana. you have drummers from Africa. from Africa coming down for a whole week having workshops in Bellevue, in Grace, and so on. Can you imagine what, what can happen? So you have a, a kind of community tourism that's based on culture and on art. We've spoken about fisheries and sea moss at Savans Bay. Grace, woodlands, a huge farming area with forests. And even that too, people want to come to see your local wood. What, what, what kinds of, of 
flora you have, and so on. Researchers, people, you know, students coming in to do research. So I do not want the, the parliament and, and the country to think, when we speak of tourism, we are only thinking of people who come off the cruise ship. No. The vision is wider. And you'll hear from the, from the Minister for Tourism. I mean, it's wider than that. It is connecting people with communities. And the Airbnb concept, very good. And certainly, I can't speak of what the Minister for Tourism will be presenting to the House and the Prime Minister in short order. But the whole business of Airbnb and how people can accommodate um, visitors and so on, I am excited, Miss. I am really excited about the future. I'm excited about the future, Mr. Speaker. I'm excited about the plans. Look at what the look at the way the Prime Minister presented today and the and the, the, the benefits for the people of St. Lucia. I'm excited. I'm excited for the young people of you Fort North who, who are getting all of those benefits. One university graduate per household, the laptops for the children, the youth economy. I haven't even gone there yet. The youth economy, a number of people in my constituency have benefited. I want more to benefit, but I'm excited for them. It's not a doom and gloom thing where the leader of the opposition comes to chastise solutions. We have no plan and this and that. What? We're not resilient. What were they doing for the young people? They said that 4,000 young people will be employed to clean horses. And then, they turned back, Mr. Speaker, and told the young people that they will not be able to raise their local horses among the high class, thoroughbred horses. In air condition. You understand? <laughs> that is not what we are saying. We are saying here we are going to upskill, we are going to provide community tourism opportunities, and we are going to work hard for our people. But, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to end if I do not pay tribute to the Minister for Tourism and Investment, Mr. Speaker. After COVID, when we came into government, yeah. you remember COVID? Yes. And you remember what happened to investment and, and tourism and our economy? Yeah. And when we came into government under the leadership of, of the Member of Parliament for Castries East, the Minister for Tourism and his team went to work the cabinet of ministers helping to guide and look at what has happened to tourism and to investment mr speaker it is not my place to speak about this budget is coming but look at what has happened and so i want to to congratulate the member of parliament for castries south and the work which he's doing mr speaker and i want to tell him move on i want to congratulate the prime minister People say sometimes, boy, y'all in government just one half years, why y'all congratulating and talking about? Yes, I want to congratulate the Prime Minister on his handling of this economy, Mr. Speaker. And that is how we are able, that is how despite the challenges, interest rates internationally rising, the Ukraine war, inflation but we were able mr speaker to ch climate change issues we the prime minister has been able to guide this economy create new avenues the youth economy and so many avenues for our people to become resilient and to deal with the challenges mr speaker he took the three loaves and and fed thousands <laughs> But I will say I will, to you, Mr. Speaker, I join all who will say to our own people, everywhere in St. Lucia, that this is not a one-man or one-woman job. This is not just a job for the government. In every nook and cranny of St. Lucia, this is a job for all of us. If you have a fence by the road, and there's grass and bush just behind the fence, I mean, if you don't clean that yourself, it says something that I will not describe here in the Parliament. But we have to be open. If you have a house, whether it's by the road or inside or wherever, and you are not upaifim, you have to clean around your house. And if everybody cleans around their house, we eventually will have a clean country. So I encourage everyone to do the basic things. Pa vo vo fridge there. 
pas jeter galvanize dans la vie. There are some basic things we need to, all of us, all of us, need to work harder on to keep our communities clean. And I wish to congratulate the council and the chairman of the council in VA for North for a wonderful execution of the baton relay. And I wish to congratulate the minister for housing and local government and his team. But Mr. Speaker, I support this community tourism um, motion. And I say to you, I'm excited about the future. You saw what can happen to the future if we ever allow the presence who walked out back into this chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.